Music. I start each and every day thinking about it. Music drowns out the noise from our daily lives. It's an escape. It's empowering. It lifts us. It carries us. And although this video is from a musician's perspective, you will relate to it too because of our mutual love for music. Much has happened in my musical journey, which has pushed me to become the solo recording songwriter I am today. This video isn't simply about me becoming a musician. It's about how my unconditional love for music has shaped my life's journey. And that's the journey I want to share with you now. And the best place to start is from the beginning. I was born in South Africa in 1989, and then at the age of 11, I moved to Portugal. My uncle had a guitar, an acoustic guitar, at home. One day I built the courage to ask him to lend it to me. I used the internet uh, to learn. So at the time while I was learning who I was as a guitarist, I was trying to discover new bands, you know, that were back, I remember back in the day that was a thing, and it still is today for anyone, to discover new sounds and new music. So I remember sitting upstairs in our TV room, watching MTV, and I had a notepad in my hand, and I was kind of just searching, and the band popped up. It was Biffy Clyro, it was 57. It was the first time I heard of this band. And it was just something about the three piece they would all sing. And I don't know, it was just something that captured me. I didn't know, it would break. I didn't know then, but that was my first encounter with my favorite band. My first song that I played was a song from Biffy Clyro called Hope for an Angel. And um, it was really awesome to actually physically play something that you just hear, you know? And it was, it was an awesome experience. I believe in the human need to believe there's hope for an angel. And then while I was learning more about the guitar, I started kind of singing naturally even though I was horrible at it, but it just felt like it was something I wanted to do, you know? Soon after developing my skills further with the guitar, I managed to convince my mom that you know, I was really passionate about music and the guitar. So I managed to convince her to purchase an electric guitar for me for my birthday, I think it was. Going from an acoustic that had very high action, meaning it was very difficult to press down on the frets and all that, to an electric guitar just made it so much more easier. My mom saw I was serious about it, you know, I was passionate about it. She decided to enroll me to music school. What I, what I remember mostly from those times is that my teacher told me my fingers were too thick to play the guitar properly. And then since then, I basically realized that I didn't need anyone else to progress forward. So I always wanted to write my own music and the first song I wrote was back, I had a, a small band, just a drum and me, and the song was called The Beginning of Everything, because I knew that was literally the beginning of great things to come. Soon after developing my skills and getting better and pushing forward, I found an awesome drummer. He was introduced to me from a previous band member. And we made a band, a kind of a cover band. And we just, it was just for the fun, you know, just playing covers. We played System Over Down, Blink-182, um, some Buffy Clyro, um, some Block Party also. <laughs> we would read each other musically, you know. And uh, that's what kind of made 
us special, you know. And we used to improvise and just make music. <laughs> I was always singing. I was extremely bad in the beginning, and then I got better and better. But by the time I had this band, I wasn't good enough, and Tiago had a very good ear for being in tune and stuff like that. So I knew he didn't like me singing, and he was also open about it, saying, you know, you're not, you're not that good, so don't sing. But I was fine with that, because at the end of the day, I was still learning my instrument, the guitar. After a while, the band ended because I think I was drifting away. I wanted to be rock and he was really gearing towards metal and it was definitely something I didn't want to do. Uh, I always during my lifetime would go and approach people saying, do you want to play an instrument? Do you want to play an instrument? And try and convince them to play an instrument. And some of them said yes, some of them said no, some of them parent, the parents didn't let them get involved, you know. But some I managed to convince and one was Rudy that I met in my class. And he said he had a friend that plays guitar and he has another friend that's also interested. His brother's also in bands, so he's in the music thing. And I said, okay, let's, let's give it a go, there's nothing to lose. So we made the band Pulver Rap. The bassist and the drummer didn't know anything. So I kind of stepped in because I was really experienced with drummers previously and, you know, writing music and covers, so I kind of taught them the instrument. The good thing with them not having any skills or not being experienced gave me space to also improve my vocals, which is what I really actually wanted to do at that stage. I wanted to improve in singing, and the way I could do that was starting with people at the same level as me, technically, you know? So a previous band member taught me how to count in time and write things in time, you know, how to write notation. And um, it was extremely useful because then I would use a, a program called Guitar Pro. You, you get many of them now, but back in the day, it was Guitar Pro was mostly popular. And I could actually write a complete song with the full idea and show them to my band members. And that kind of helped me a lot to really get my idea across to them that weren't that experienced or couldn't visualize or hear or imagine when I, what I was thinking. There was a local band, they were called The Lloyd. They really just inspired me to write good music because, I don't know, there was something just catchy at the time and that inspired me at the time. I was hoping to actually reach that level of songwriting, you know? been probably two or three years, they grew like really well, you know, playing the instruments. The drummer was really original. I was always impressed with the things you would do, you know, I wouldn't think about it and you would do something cool. And then the bassist also he drew his own character, you know, and the guitarist was always good, he always had skill. But it was cool that we kind of, we were becoming this real band, you know. I went to a music festival, well actually I think my first music festival, big one. Uh, we were watching a band live, we were watching one of the bands live, obviously the many bands. And one of my friends poked me on my shoulder and said, look who's on your right hand side. So I looked over and there, Buffy Clyra, sitting on the grass. I was like shocked, I was like, my favourite band, people that influenced me over the years, 
were sitting just like meters away from me. You know, the people that made me play music, that made me get interested in rock. So what do you do in that situation? People would say you shouldn't bother them, you know, they're enjoying also the show and all that stuff, but I'm saying, you know, this is a once in a lifetime thing. And it's kind of like, it's important to let them know you exist. So I thought we must do it, you know, we must just say we, we are great fans. So we did that, we, I spoke to Ben, I spoke a lot to Simon. We spoke about how I bought his Deval, I have a Fender Stratocaster and I can get nowhere near his sound. And then he said, it's all about the details. It was a really great experience, you know. So at the time now, Palvare was kind of like growing, but we were kind of stagnating. And the reason why we, I felt we were stagnating was because of the drums. Alex was, I would say, is a mellow drummer, and the band was gearing towards a more rock feeling and a more punkish, I would say. And Alex physically couldn't cope. He would actually get tired. That's when I got the idea to invite my old drummer, Tiago. He had grown out of the metal and all that stuff, and I approached him saying, would you be interested in playing our type of style? And he said he was really keen. I asked the other band members, what do you think? Because, in my opinion, this is the next step Pavel needs to make, to go to the next level. And they kind of agreed with me, because they also wanted to, they were, we were all on the same page, basically. So sadly, we had to cut off Alex. We grew really close as friends, all of us, all four of us. And it wasn't just four of us, it was a big group of friends that were all involved kind of in the band. And it was tough, but it was something that I felt then that needed to happen. Maybe some of you are thinking that, what, what about my vocals now? Well, at this time, my vocals were better, and I think Tia grew up, and I grew up, and we know how to kind of compromise, you know? I wasn't the best vocalist. It was more about the music now, you know? Soon after the band started going with Tiago, you know, we started doing a few gigs. Recording producers approached us and they asked us, do you want to record an EP at our awesome studio? And we said, yeah, man, it sounds like a plan. Let's go, let's go do it. Long story short, we spent months in there and the outcome was like a very poppy version of Palvare. It was nowhere near the rock I was imagining all those years in my head. And we were rather disappointed. It's important to be yourself when you record your first EP and everything else. It kind of ruined us a bit. So whoever's out there, record what you want to record and don't let people step on your vision. I think it's very important, the first thing you do, do it your way. And don't do it by, by other people's terms, you know. And then I think you'll value that later. After doing this whole studio thing, it gave me that bug that we need to record music. So a friend of a friend said he can record us. He had a simple, it was nothing serious. It wasn't a big studio like we were before. But I heard an example of one of his songs and he said he did that type of music with the setup and I said, that's awesome. The outcome was kind of like bland. There was no depth. And that's when I just decided, maybe why don't I do this myself? No one else can envision what we want to do, so why not just try? So I bought my first Fire White Face and we recorded the same song we recorded in the studio and with a friend and the outcome to me was much better.
Pavare went for our first gig out of town completely. It was a few kilometers away from where we were living. And the gig went horribly bad. It was in a hangout, it was just kind of shitty. And after that, I didn't hear from the other band members for like two, three weeks. And then I was like, something's off here, so we must meet. And when we met, they were saying basically they wanted to end the band um, because they didn't like the music anymore. At that time, I felt, I can't remember exactly how I was feeling, but I didn't have any more strength to fight. Because I know we always had issues, you know, we always had to overcome them. But I remember then the only person that wanted to keep the band running was the guitarist. Over the years, we thought the guitarist would always leave us because he just had his priorities. He's in studies, basically, which isn't a bad thing, but we always felt he'll be the first one. But he was the last man standing. He was saying, we're doing well, Pavare is becoming something. I had lost hope and the others were basically saying they want to do their own music so they joined the drummer and the bassist made their own band after that but I decided okay let's end it and then soon after that I also decided that I'm fed up with Portugal and I'm going to come back to South Africa. I had a few months ahead of me still, and I knew I wanted to still make music. So I decided to do some electro rock, so a little bit of electronic music in the rock. So I'd, I'd met people over the years, other musician friends, and they said, yeah, let's just do something for fun. And we made a band called Kapoom. So while I was prepping to leave, to to South Africa, I was really, I didn't want to stop making music. So I decided to make a project called Enter the Cosmo. As a, just my project, I would write my own music and just release. Because that was the plan, you know, even though I didn't have a band, I needed some way to write music and release it. And that was my platform. So the funny thing is, if you remember, I spoke about this local band called The Lloyd previously. They, at this time, they invited me to join the band. And I think that's kind of a full circle moment. It was really important because then it, it showed that I was a good musician. I grew to become a good musician because a band like that are asking me to join them. But sadly, I was really set on leaving to South Africa and I declined. So when I was finally about to move, I was worried about one thing. When I came to South Africa, I needed to be able to write music and nothing else. What I did was, my recording interface was, it's portable, so I could take that anyway. And then I sold my car, my Renault Clear. I took that money and I bought myself a laptop. Because that was one way I could assure myself that I could continue writing music. That was the most important thing to me. Soon after arriving in South Africa, I met this guy called Luke and we made a band called Atomic Vikings. It was the first time that another guitarist actually wrote with me and we would sing guitar profiles, notations and make songs together. And then we recorded one or two, released them and then the band suddenly kind of faded away because we didn't get anyone interested. There was no bassist, no drummers, you know, and it just kind of just faded away. We never officially ended, but it just fell away slowly. At this stage, after Atomic Vikings kind of faded away, I was thinking, what am I going to do now? What? There's, I can't get a band, I can't do anything. So I decided to get better at mixing music. So I got book books, I started learning the basics of mixing and recording. I also decided to kind of make my small mini studio and then also enrolled in a, in a school, Copa, in Kensington, yeah, in Johannesburg. What I got out of it was analog hybrid 
recording interface. They had the big board, the GSR24 or something. The teacher told us there's a smaller board, more accessible, the ZR16. The fact that you could look at the 16 channel mixing board and do your EQs there with analog circuits, you know, and mix your song on this real board just was really appealing to me. This is the dream. This is the kind of setup I would like to have one day. After developing my um, mixing skills, you know, I decided what better else to do than record all of Paul Ray's previous songs. We had like 20 songs or 23 songs. I think I recorded 19 over the year from 2012 to 2013. So after finishing Power Race, recording Power Race songs and all that, I still felt I was living in the past, you know. Was, this was like maybe three years after leaving Portugal. So I decided to enter the Cosmo because that's what I felt was also kind of my part of my past and all that stuff. And uh, I sent some of my songs to a site called Sign My Sound and it's, I think they don't exist anymore, but they got back to me saying, your music's interesting, you have talent, but your music isn't um, radio friendly, I think is what he said, he used. It was very indie. And I agree with him, of course it was. Pavare was indie, it was a progressive rock indie band. The thing he told me was basically, you need to improve basically in your songwriting skills. You need to get better at songwriting. And that just gave me an idea, this is something else I need to learn. Or understand, really understand, instead of just wing it. I decided to do cover videos at this stage because I wasn't, I didn't feel ready to write and also I kind of felt like I wanted to give back to the bands that influenced me, you know. And the way I approached this was like a full production. I learned the songs in detail and then I would record everything from scratch and then I would do a multi-cam uh, video edit and then I'll package all this to make a kind of a performance type of thing instead of just one camera and just playing it. I stopped doing that because it used to take me around three weeks to like do one song, like after work, constantly at it to get it done. And I felt that the views, even though I was highly appreciative of all the comments that came in and positive comments, I got awesome comments, I just felt that the return of investment wasn't worth spending three weeks, I would rather spend it doing something else. Um, and at the time when I finished doing the cover videos, I was ready for the next phase. I found an awesome deal with the Allen & Heath ZR16, which you'll know that I mentioned earlier. It was my dream setup. So because I found an awesome deal, I said, I need to do this. This is, it's meant to be. So I got the ZR16 and I recorded one song of Power Race. And I was always holding on to the song and not finishing it because I always felt that this song, which the song is called I'm Getting Dizzy, was the future of Power Ray. And I think if the band didn't end, that's what we would have become, or even better than that. But that was the beginning of the next phase of Power Ray. After I recorded that song, I felt that a weight was lifted off my shoulders, kind of. And that's the day when I released that song to the world that I finally let go of my past. I finally let go of Pavare. I finally let go of the obsession I had with my past and my bandmates. It all ended there. So after being released of that weight, 
I decided my next project needs to be simple. It needs to be, I don't want to hide behind band names, behind ideas. I want to be who I am and honest. I want to be honest. So at this stage when I was, just, I decided making the project on vinyl. I hadn't written songs for like four years. As soon as I finished recording all of Palvary songs, I didn't feel ready. I didn't feel ready vocally. I didn't feel ready with like songwriting. I just felt I wasn't going to be good enough or my new music wouldn't be good enough. But I, I tried to learn, I tried getting better at mixing, songwriting, singing, and I just never felt ready until now, basically. I feel like I'm ready to, to write again. Even though I'm a rock at heart, I always wanted to explore writing common music, but I never had the chance to, until now. I finally feel I can write the type of music I always wanted to write. Real, honest music. Now is the time for me to be meaningful. I want to be meaningful to myself and to people out there. I've recorded an EP now to go alongside this video. My whole journey to becoming a, a solo musician or a musician has led up to the moment where I had to do things alone. Everything that's happened was like, it's pushed me to do things alone. The way I approach doing music alone is putting the song together, it's, it's rather hard, it's just you and a machine, you know, the computer. And you kind of write you, I use a notation, so I write my music in there, and it stays there, you know, and then it plays back to you, and you kind of layer, and you keep on layering until you make a chorus, a verse. Getting the arrangement done and the lyrics done, you kind of step on to the recording phase. How a person alone would approach drums is, of course, with a computer. Nowadays, you get drums plugins that sound really authentic. You do need to change the way certain hits are hit on the drum manually, so you make it feel more human. After laying down the drums, then you layer the bass. Um, the bass is power of the song I find and that's extremely important to have a good balance with drums and bass and that's obviously with an instrument now I play bass over the drums usually just to give it that foundation after the Bass is done, you approach guitars. Now this is my baby, so guitars are always, I'm a sucker for a good melody and rhythm. Those things have to be on point when I do anything with guitar. Guitars you have to like record once, and then record twice, maybe three times or four times. Sometimes you change the sound or you change the guitar. We change the way the mic is placed, and it's all of these different positions or, or different instruments that make the sound wide, they call it, you know. After the drums, bass, and um, guitars are done, basically start the vocals. Now the vocals, are, it's still, till, till this day, it's, for me it's still the most difficult thing and I still feel I'm not good enough. And probably it's what's also been holding me back over the years from doing anything else because I felt I still needed to get better. But I'm more consistent than what I was before so I'm happy with being consistent, you know. You can play a lot with vocals when you're doing recordings. I'm yours and you are mine, I don't know who you are, but I'll find you. The extra stuff I do is mostly MIDI stuff. So it's like maybe a shaker that I don't have. Um, violins, I like my violins, I usually sometimes add violins. So it's all these extra things that you can kind of add on to the song. It just gives it a bit more character and a bit more it's something else, something special, you know. And after all of the stuff's recorded, you mix. And this, I won't go into too much detail because I feel that there's professionals out there that work full-time doing mixing and mastering 
songs and uh, you can definitely do this alone at home in a small little studio with a small little interface but don't take away from the real professionals out there because it does take a lot of effort to get things perfect and not just perfect on your speakers but the speakers that are going to play on your iPhones, Androids, computers, cars, hi-fis and that's where things get tricky to get a good balanced song. Whoever's out there that wants to do their own thing, don't be discouraged but value that there are professionals out there that are there for a reason, you know. It's hard to write music alone because I think music is, it's a, it's, a, it's a human thing, you know, it's like interaction thing, it's, it's speaking to people, it's feeling other people's energies. And doing it alone, it, it is tough, but it gets done. And I still moments, I give myself goosebumps and all that. The difference is that it's just you and your computer, you know, and your computer is your, your bandmate basically. Over the years, music's always been there, you know. And I, even after everything that's happened, changing countries, bands ending, which, were, which was, was a hard time for me, I just couldn't give up. And now, a lot of people would actually probably move countries and just like say, oh well, it's the end of that. I just couldn't, and I can't. And I think that's why I'm also doing this video, because I just can't. I'm always trying to find new ways to get my music out there, to out there to people that listen. And I'm not gonna give up. So. I'm not gonna give up, so that's, that's, I think that's it. I just never, I can't give up on music.